Last week, I saw Transformers Rise of the Beasts. And back then, I didn't have my own review channel. But now that I do, I can talk about it. Okay. Now, I wasn't going to review Transformers Rise of the Beasts, but I'm, I just started my review channel and I'm still trying to improve like the sound quality and the video quality. So I figured, okay, I need something to review. So we'll start with this. This is directed by Stephen Capel Jr., who also directed Creed 2. It stars uh, Anthony Ramos as Noah Diaz and Dominic Fishback as Elena Wallace. So those are the two human characters in the movie. Okay, so let's start with the plot. Right? Um, the movie starts with... There is a MacGuffin or, you know, like a device or a gizmo that the bad guys need. And then the gizmo manages to escape and it ends up on Earth because everything has to end up on Earth. Like it doesn't matter. Earth is the only planet in the universe where anything can end up. And then on Earth, we meet our lead character uh, who through a series of circumstances, ends up in a car. That car is, lo and behold, an Autobot. And so he gets mixed up with the, with the Autobots, and the Autobots also want this MacGuffin, which is currently in a museum where we meet our second human character. And then the bad guys show up, which are called Terracons who work for Unicron. And then the humans have to team up with the Autobots and along the way they meet the Maximals and they have to fight the Terracons. This is the plot of almost every single Michael Bay Transformers movie. Like, at this point, you don't even, like, people talk about, like, you know, AI and whatever, and I'm not a big fan of AI, but people talk about stuff like, oh, chat GPT can write a script. Like, right now, you don't even need chat GPT. You can just use a photocopier, like, just get a Xerox machine, and because, like, this has five credited screenplay writers, and, like, you are, this is every single Transformers movie. Like, in the first Transformers, it was, like, Sam Witwicky's grandfather's glasses and in the second one there was like a key of something and in the third one there were those giant pillars that were going to open up a portal it's the same thing in the I think in the fourth one it was the seed it's just like every single movie it's the same thing like the problem is that it's not really about uh, a generic plot it's about what you do with it right like if you look at every heist movie it's the same plot okay? but you can take a heist movie and make something really generic with it, or you can take a heist movie and do Ocean's Eleven with it. You know, so the problem with this one is that it is really basic. Uh, like, on a story level, on an action level, everything is adequate. You know, like, if you want something that is very, very light entertainment, this is fine. Like, it's not going to cause, it's not going to offend you, and it's not going to bore you either. It's not going to entertain you a lot. Like, this isn't Top Gun Maverick or John Wick 4 or anything like that. The acting across the board is fine. Like, Anthony Ramos plays Noah Diaz, who is a soldier, uh, ex-soldier, and a tech specialist. And he's looking for a job. He needs a job desperately because his younger brother is sick. And then, you know, we ends up getting in a car through a circumstance that I won't explain because it's a spoiler. And then the car turns out to be an Autobot named Mirage. Like in this one, at least the difference is like instead of Bumblebee, you have Mirage. I guess, you know, like Paramount and Hasbro is like, we need to sell toys of something other than Bumblebee, right? So let's do Mirage this time. The the funny thing is, like, even though the trailers and everything tend to focus on Noah Diaz, on Anthony Ramos's character, the character that's more important or more interesting is Elena, because she's the archaeologist who is sort of def deciphering all the, the clues and the puzzles and everything. So even if you remove Anthony Ramos and you just keep Dominic Fishback, the movie actually still works. 
The, the other issue that happens with almost all the Transformers movies is that they always have like far too many Autobots and Decepticons and you know like the cast is huge. Okay, like in this one you have you have Mirage and Optimus Prime and then you know RC finally shows up in a live action and you have a bunch of other uh, Autobots and then you meet the Maximals uh, where there's like Optimus Primal and uh, this Michelle Yeoh voicing a giant eagle. I'm forgetting the name all of a sudden. And then you have the, and then you have like the Terracons who, uh, the leader is called Scourge, who are the minions of uh, Unicron, and he's voiced by uh, Peter Dinklage. The problem that happens with a cast this big is that only a few of them get a moment to shine. So with the Autobot, it's mostly Mirage, right? Like Pete Davidson does a great job voicing Mirage. He's like smart alecky, witty, funny. So you kind of you know latch on to him. With uh, with the Maximals, it's even though it's you know the the trailer tends to show more of uh, Optimus Primal, like the giant gorilla, but uh, it's the eagle that is actually more important. Like Michelle Yeoh gets more to do, and then with the villains, it's mostly just Scourge. Like the others are there, but I wouldn't even be able to name any of them. And I think that's the one thing that was done very smartly with Bumblebee, where Travis Knight sort of just shrank the whole thing down, and you just had like Bumblebee and you had like two Decepticons, and that's great, right? Like because then everyone gets stuff to do, and you're not like you know you don't have to deal with a huge cast. Not that you can't, right? Like you got something like Ocean's Eleven; it has like eleven people in the central cast, and then you have the villain. But everyone gets stuff to do. You remember everyone. Everyone has like memorable dialogues. This is not one of those movies. Uh, the one positive about the movie, which has been a positive across all the Transformers movies, is that the VFX work has always been top notch. And even in this one, it's just fantastic. Like all the the robot designs, the Autobot designs are great. The Maximals are done really well. The animation work is fantastic. The transformation sequences are great. So no complaints over there. Like at no point does the VFX look like VFX look iffy or anything. Not that I concentrate that much on it, but at surface level, like everything looks fantastic. And that's always been the case. Like even if you watch Bumblebee or any of the um, uh, any of the Michael Bay movies, they're all great. Okay. The the one problem, okay, like I've been complaining enough, anyways, but. One of the other issues that I have with the movie is that the final fight sequence sort of takes place in this sort of grey CGI landscape. The problem with something like that is that it removes all sense of scale. Right? Like with the one advantage of the Michael Bay movies is like he liked shooting all of his action sequences in uh, in cities. So you have like a lot of different things to compare the robots with or the Autobots and Decepticons with. With this one, it's just a grey landscape. So leaving out when you get like no idea sort of running here and there, you don't really sort of, there's no sense of scale anywhere. So I don't know why that decision was made, but so yeah, I mean, if you haven't watched it, you're not missing anything. If you find a cheap ticket and you're kind of bored, you can watch it. And even if you don't, when it shows up on streaming, it's fine. But to end this on a positive note, right? The, the one complaint I've had with, with franchise movies is I don't think they go stupid enough. Like, after a franchise has gone on for too long, I think you need to get more ridiculous. Which the Fast and the Furious movies have done, right? Like the last one, not, not Fast X, but the one before that. They went into space and I was like, fuck yeah, do that, like go crazy. And there was a rumor a few years ago, which I'm very sure was just a rumor, was that Universal wanted to mix Fast and the Furious with Jurassic World. I was like, that is so stupid, I will watch it. With this one, the final shot of the movie ends on like a close-up of a visiting card. I'm not going to give away anything. But when I read what's written on that visiting, I was like, fuck yeah, like, this is what I want. 
I don't know how it'll turn out, but when that movie comes out, I am going to the theater to watch it <laughs> because it's such a dumb idea. Like I, I don't know if it's done in the cartoons or not, but I would love to see that movie. So yeah, I mean the whole movie is pretty generic, but it ends on a high note. So yay for that. <laughs>